Hi Aries Sun and Aries Rising, it's Raina here and this is a video for the transit of Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. Now earlier this year, and I'm recording this in 2020, um, Saturn did go into Aquarius briefly. So this is not the first time at the rodeo for Saturn. But in December of 2020, and I want you to keep the winter solstice summer in the southern hemisphere uh, in mind because this is particularly significant when they are converging um, you are going to have both Jupiter and Saturn uh, at a zero degree conjunction in Aquarius and this will carry on throughout most of 2021 for Jupiter. Jupiter is going to go into Pisces mid-year and then retrograde into Aquarius again and go direct and then in at the very end of 2021 go back into Pisces. Saturn is going to stay in Aquarius into 2022 so Saturn isn't going anywhere now but Jupiter is going to be in Aquarius for most of 2021 as well. And this I'm really looking forward to this convergence of these two planets, this conjunction at the time of the winter solstice, because I feel like humanity is being awakened, um, that we have, you know, been all dealing with something on this global scale in 2020. And it's like we, it's like having this new dawn the dawn of a new day. Maybe we could call it the Aquarian age and, um, but whatever it's, I, I, you know, the, the sign of Aquarius is a sign of humanity. And so having these two plants come together to me feels very like a very good omen. So for, um, Aries, this is going to occur in your 11th house. And the interesting thing is that the 11th house is, the house of Aquarius. So it's going to be in there in that house for you. And this is because you're the template of the um, universal chart that, um, you know, Aquarius is in is your 11th house, but you have these two planets that just so happen to be transiting into that sign. And um, so that is an emphasis of the humanitarian vibe for Aries in 2021, well, end of 2020 and throughout 2021. And um, so Jupiter being this planet that is about expansion and, you know, um, also optimism, having faith, having the sense of the possible. The 11th house is your house of hopes and wishes. So it's going to be easier for you to wish for things. And the reason this is important is that, um, and to be, you could say being hopeful, being positive about the possibility of your dreams coming true, and even maybe manifesting those dreams as well. Uh, Jupiter is also associated with luck. And so uh, being able to have something be in the right place at the right time, which I actually consider to be alignment. Um, I find that the word luck sounds very random. And I think that when people are really invested in their dreams, which are connected to the 11th house, they're going to take action on those dreams and especially a sign like Aries. And so it's one thing to, to, to fantasize and to have your mind go on all these things. And actually visual visualization is very important. So I would never deride, you know, daydreaming or anything like that. But it's another thing to chase after those dreams, to not just be sitting there and thinking about things, but actually taking inspired action in the direction of your dreams. And so I feel like you might be able to do that because you're, you are inspired. You have to be inspired, and that is a big part of it. People tend to, like, stop 
having goals and having a vision for themselves when they feel they don't feel hopeful. So I think that you are going to feel that way. And that's going to naturally generate more good stuff coming to you. Um, this is the house of friends and the house of social contacts and groups. So expansion, expansion in this area may be something that you um, have happen. And this can be very um, a very nice thing because you may be looking to um, do so for a particular goal. I mean, some of you may actually be thinking of um, living with others, living in a more communal setting. I'm not saying that this is going to be true, and I didn't read this when I was um, perusing different websites. I did not read this. Um, I'm just saying this on my own because this is the house of kind of like the, the utopia um, of a society that is, you know, fair for everybody. So you're going to be a humanitarian in general, but sometimes people take this to a new level. And that's what I'm uh, thinking, especially if you have, you know, Aquarius very prominent in your chart, like maybe you have a moon in Aquarius or Aquarius rising, and you've just always had this dream of some kind of, um, you know, like, I, I, I keep using the word utopia or communal living. And I mean, like a intentional community, that's the way that they describe it. And I think that's better, because it's more like, including the independent aspect, because it doesn't mean you have to live under the same roof with people. But some people may be interested in like the tiny home movement is big and having a tiny home community or an eco friendly community where it's, you know, the houses are all eco eco friendly or something like that. Um, but you may be gaining your social circle, maybe like expanding and or maybe groups that you associate with. Maybe they are broadening your horizons in some way and they're kind of benefiting you. But even people that you already know, they could be of assistance to you. And um, you you might even be of assistance to them if, if you have more going on in your life that you can, you can help them out. Um, so there's a sense of you're you increasing your own tolerance towards humanity. Aries people tend to be progressive individuals. And I don't mean this in a political way. Uh, I, I was going to joke because you could, you know, some people like I'm, I'm thinking of America thinking of like Republicans are conservative and Democrats are liberal. Well, not so fast. Um, it, it all depends on how you behave <laughs> and, and how you, you speak about things. But, you know, I was going to joke and say if you're a Republican, you probably become a libertarian, you know, because they're very liberal in their social uh, attitudes. Um, but still, um, you know, you are, you are a, um, a, a, you know, an individualist already, Aries. And so you would um, be somebody who... Aries people and fire signs in general, I'm a Sagittarian, so I'm saying this about myself as well, tend to be rather self-absorbed, not in a necessarily narcissistic way, but just be, you know, very into your own things, wanting to express your own ideas, very, maybe very opinionated about your own beliefs. And this can make you more tolerant towards the collective, towards other people's points of view and beliefs. And I'm not saying that you're not already, but you may gain in that. Um, now, this was very interesting because I think sometimes uh, certain astrological um, ideas are from, from Vedic astrology, Eastern astrology. Now, the financial gain, I've heard things about the second from the 10th house, financial gain maybe through your career, um, 
I'm not too well versed in that particularly, and I did not see that in several of the sites that I visited, although there was one where I did see that. And so they mentioned financial gain, but they also mentioned about groups. So I don't know if they also meant, meant through just in general, but they did say, uh, now this was, I thought this has to be Vedic because they said um, that this could indicate a woman has a husband. Um, a woman, obviously, it would have to be a woman who's heterosexual who wants a husband in the first place, but she, uh, that this could indicate a husband because the 11th house is the house of gain and Jupiter is the husband in a woman's chart. So I did not know that. I don't know how many of you knew that, but I looked it up and I, the first thing I, I saw was it was like a Vedic or an Eastern uh, type of astrology, like a chart, uh, like the delineation of the houses. It was definitely that type of system. And I, and when they, I was reading through the whole thing, I did not agree with all of it. Some of it I found interesting, but, and some of it is very similar, but you know, it, this is just whatever resonates with you. I just wanted to include that because I thought that was interesting. Um, so let's talk about Saturn. Um, your friendships are scrutinized for their importance. So this is a perfect example of like these diametrically opposed planets that are one thing is giving and you might assume one is taking away. But really what I'm saying is that what could be happening is that your existing friendships may be scrutinized and you may be saying, are these people adding value to my life? I don't really like that term because it makes them into a commodity, but in general, a sense of uh, people and how they uh, either can detract from your purpose in life and, and things like that because Saturn is very serious and it doesn't like that frivolity you know what I mean and so if you are surrounded by people who are kind of just encouraging you to goof off and not they, they're not taking life seriously you might at this time Aries find that irritating in some way now of course we have to look at your whole chart for more info on why that would be Maybe there's something important that you really want uh, to accomplish. And yeah, for sure, you know, you currently have, I'm, I'm talking about as I re, I'm recording this in November of 2020, you currently have Saturn in Capricorn, uh, Pluto in Capricorn, and th this is your 10th house. So you may be so focused on, you know, attaining uh, power in your career that you do not want and success, you don't want anybody to kind of drag you down or make demands on you that are for frivolous things. You're really all about your work, perhaps. And um, so the other thing, too, is like being more aware of cooperating with people and maybe having a sense of duty to the people that you're dealing with. Because again, Aries is the, the first house of the self and you're a fire sign to boot. So you're very into your own achievements, your own, you know, doing things for your own success in life. And you may have some kind of a lesson. Saturn can teach lessons about how you need to be more cooperative and more teamwork and more, you know, paying attention to others rather than focusing on your own, like what can you do on your own? The, the group dynamic becomes, you take more seriously and it can benefit you though too. That's the important thing. And so I was talking about hopes and wishes and I really think that this can crystallize these things, make them become things that you um, have on the tangible level. And that's wonderful because that means that you're able to um, 
to make them happen, that they won't just be pipe dreams. And so you can dream big, but then, you know, manifest big and, and uh, work, but also work for your dreams. Not just think they're going to drop in your lap, but actually, you know, making them happen. And, um, but the, you're going to evaluate these goals. You're going to see if they are viable, if they are worthy of your time and attention. And so you're not going to just run wild with it, even though Jupiter encourages you to. And I think that is a good uh, balance because you have to have both elements. You have to be able to dream, dream big, but you can't be, uh, kind of unrealistic about it either. Okay, that's what I have for you, Aries. I hope that you're looking forward to this uh, shift in uh, the cosmos happening in December and going through 2021. And speaking of 2021, since we're almost there, if you would like to look at, have that uh, looked at through transits, you know, what transits are occurring, your nail chart interpretation, how that plays into the things that you want to accomplish, your skills, your attitudes, and things of that nature. Um, I have a nail chart interpretation. I have different variations. Please check the link below for all of my offerings. Take care of yourselves. Bye.